Hey guys, today is March 4th and as you can see I got another really nice crop of tomatoes coming on in these Dutch buckets. Uh, these things absolutely kick butt. This particular crop was put in place on Super Bowl Sunday so about 30 days ago and you can see what kind of uh, growth I've got already. Most of them already had the first and the second cluster of tomatoes on here doing extremely well. I covered this quite a bit last year in the how-to video, how to get this thing set up and just uh, how simple it was to be able to grow tomatoes in a setup like this where you, you don't do a whole lot of work. There's not a lot of work involved in this once you get it set up and going. I showed how I planted these things and got them started and then as the weeks and months passed by they just got taller and taller and ended up, I mean, absolutely loaded down with tomatoes. I don't think, uh, I, don't think I could have done a better job than how they turned out last year. So with that in mind, when you have a system that actually is working, functioning extremely well, when you get ready to start another crop, you don't go back and try to reinvent the wheel. The only thing you try to do is take a step back and look at what happened and do a little bit of fine tuning and try to get just a little bit better, just tweak it some. You don't want to go and change up a whole lot of things. Just try to learn from anything you can, the little bitty bits and pieces here and there. So what I'm gonna do is go down the list right here of things that I learned when I uh, disassembled the entire setup and uh, fill in a lot of the blanks. The first thing to talk about was the buckets themselves. I used uh, four gallon buckets. These buckets came from the local feed store. They had a uh, water soluble fertilizer that the guys put on the uh, peanut crops. I just washed the buckets out. First time I ever used these buckets, I didn't wash them out and I had some problems. Uh, this time, when I set it up for the Dutch buckets, I made sure I washed them out and they worked extremely well. But you don't have to have a four gallon bucket. I showed the little uh, commercial Beto bucket, the one that you buy for about $7. Uh, it's about three gallons, give or take. So a three gallon bucket would be just fine. Now, where do you get a three gallon bucket at? Check the local grocery stores, the deli departments, the bakery. That's where a lot of people are getting a little round, uh, some of them are rectangle shaped, three gallon buckets, and they will work absolutely fine in a setup like this. You don't need a four or five gallon bucket to be able to make this work. Three gallons is plenty, and that will also cut down on the amount of a media that you have to put inside that bucket. The grommet that I used that went in the side, I got from Granger. Uh, the part number is 3MPL8. It's about $9 for a pack of 50. Now you're going to have to pay the shipping on it, so it'll probably be uh, you know seven, eight dollars more. But if you buy them from uh, Lowe's or Home Depot, they're about a dollar and a quarter a piece. Do the math, whichever way makes sense for you. That's the way I would go. As you can see, the buckets look a little bit different. They got black plastic around them. Let me explain how that came about. As I was cleaning up, the first thing I noticed was a little bit of algae down in the bottom of the buckets. Not a whole lot. Certainly not enough to really affect the plants because they seem to produce just fine. But as I started cleaning them out and started looking up inside like this, I could see just how bright it really was up in there. And we've talked in the past about sunlight and algae. Uh, that's a bad combination there. You need to keep, uh, keep your water dark. That way you don't have the algae problems. So to resolve that, I had two options. I could paint the buckets and I really didn't have time to take them outside. The weather just hadn't been cooperating. So what I did, I just wrapped them all in black plastic, nice and neat, and that should keep it plenty dark on the inside so I don't have any algae problems whatsoever. As a way to get the, uh, the cost basis down on the perlite, I was asked, can you reuse the perlite? Yes, you can. One question that came up early on was what do you do with the uh, perlite after you're finished? Can you reuse it again? Uh, we're going to find out. I dumped it in this tub and a big trash can right behind there and I'm going to try to reuse it again. Uh, just fill the uh, buckets back up, make sure I water them in real good and try to rinse it all back out and I think they'll be fine. We're going to find out. So I'm just trying to rinse this out as best I can, remove any kind of residue that may have been left on the perlite, make sure it drains out the bottom of the bucket. Another question involved the strainer bags that I was using. Could you reuse those bags again? And here's some I've got soaking right now. But after you get them cleaned up, washed up, this is what they look like. It's still got a few little roots, but if you let them dry out, they'll be just fine. And you can reuse these things again. That will work. I got these at a place called a painterdeal.com. And for about a dollar and something a piece, pretty cheap. 
reuse them again and again and every time you reuse it you just cut your cost basis even more. These tomatoes were started from suckers but not just any suckers. As y'all remember last year uh, sometime late April I think it was I planted a big beef tomato on the other end of the greenhouse there and just let it go in and do its thing and it grew all the way up to the top went out and it came all the way back down to the ground looked like a looked like an apple tree just about well to get my fall crop last year I took suckers off of that plant and I had this whole lineup right here with suckers from that one plant before those crops were finished up I came in and took suckers off of those and got them rooted back in January to start this whole line right here. So these are third generation uh, suckers right here. How many times can you do this? I'm not sure, but I'm gonna try to keep it going. And the one thing about rooting suckers is the fact that you get a much earlier tomato production. Because tomato, like a lot of plants, has to produce a certain amount of leaves before you ever get into the, uh, the blossoming phase. When you have a sucker, it's a part of a mature plant. It's already in that production mode. Once you get it rooted, it's ready to produce. So a lot of these, as I was already putting them in the bucket, they were already uh, had the first blossoms coming on there. Makes for really quick production. These are much easier to manage this time as I've got one bucket with two stems opened up. Got a lot more spacing in here. The plants can get plenty of sunlight and I don't have to worry about the leaves and everything are all cluttered up and disease getting up in there. I can really keep up with these things now. I think going with two stems is a good way to go. I have 16 buckets in this setup right here. I got a small setup right over there that's got six buckets in it and just over here to my right is a brand new setup with 18 buckets in it. All of those are going to be single stem. Let me show you what's going on there. This is the brand new setup that I put together and rather than building a platform to put everything up on what I did was uh, took some 2x10s put me some cleats on the bottom, little cross pieces with the 2x4s and uh, put some uh, 4 inch blocks up under that, level it up well not exactly level, I got a little bit of a grade going here so everything drains back to me and drains into the reservoir if I were going to set it up outside I would do something similar to this to get these things up off the ground just a little bit high enough where I could bury a reservoir and have everything drained into it. All of these are single stem tomatoes right here. A lot of them already got the tomatoes coming on them looking extremely good. Like I said, when you find something that works, you don't go and mess it up, you go and duplicate it. So to try to help with the reservoir temperatures as the days get longer and hotter, I decided to bury the reservoir this time as opposed to having it up ground and that stuff sitting up on the platform and it's working out pretty good. I just need to get everything up high enough where I can put an elbow on here and drain into the tote. Being a brand new setup, this did take me a little bit of time to put it together. And with the short days, it's just not enough time during the day sometimes to get everything done. So once in a while, I had to turn the lights on out here and come out here in the greenhouse and do a little bit of work at night. Digging the hole to get this toad in the ground and this hard clay right here, that was a whole lot of fun. Right here you notice I've got a thermostat. This is for a titanium aquarium heater. What I've done is I've got it dropped down in here and I will turn this on in the morning. First thing to heat the water up, I want some warm water going in to cross those roots. Once the days get hotter, this will not be a problem. My concern then will be keeping it cool. That's why I've got it sitting down in the ground. Inside the reservoir, as you notice, I don't have any aeration in here this time. There was a lot of uh, comments about that. Some people said you needed aeration. Some people said uh, you could do fine without it. So uh, I started doing it without it and the plants are doing good. Probably what I would do once the temperatures begin to get up and these reservoir temperatures start to climb, I would probably go ahead and put the aeration back in here because as the temperatures go up, the dissolved oxygen goes down 
and I think it just uh, make more sense to keep it in there. It doesn't cost me much to run those air pumps anyway, but if you don't have any air pumps, yes, this will work. And if you're wondering what this extra hole is right here, well, sometimes you make mistakes. When I wanted to drill this hole, I drilled it over here. So what I do to keep the sun out of there, just put a cup in it and uh, good to go. Well guys, I think I pretty much covered everything this time. This is not a complicated process. Uh, if you're somebody who has been struggling with growing tomatoes or you don't have any garden soil, you don't have much time to put into this, you just have a little bit of space somewhere where you can set it up on a patio, uh, on your back porch, anywhere where you can get some sunlight, Dutch Bucket Hydroponics is a great way to go. It is not complicated. Get your plants put in these buckets, get your reservoir, put your nutrient mix in there, set your pump, put it up on a timer, Run it, you know, three times a day, 15 to 30 minutes, depending on the time of year, and the thing will do fine. The way these things are going right now, about 30 more days, I'll be ready to start eating tomatoes. About the time I'll be ready to start planting outside, so I think it's a pretty good deal. Hope that was helpful. Y'all take care, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time. If you found this video to be helpful, informative, entertaining, or just downright funny, don't forget to subscribe.